Welcome back here today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Another in our series of uh, letting you know exactly what we do here at FPTC. Over 40 degree and certification programs available right here on the campus in downtown Chipley. Here today with Jordan and Lisa, two students currently in the drafting program. Just a couple doors down from where we find ourselves here in Studio B this morning. We're going to talk to Jordan and Lisa about drafting. Perhaps how they got involved in it. What got their attention that, that made them uh, enter that drafting program? They're both a ways into that program. We'll talk a little bit about their progress to date, uh, maybe what they like, what they don't particularly care for. Uh, also, the brand new 3D printer just delivered this week, uh, state of the art, giving the people here at, uh, the instructors here at uh, Florida Panhandle Technical College, certainly, the ability to expose students to that brand new technology, the students to learn how, in this case, uh, in drafting, how to draw on CAD, uh, computer-aided drafting and drawing, how to draw things that can then be printed on that 3D printer. It gets pretty complex. You're gonna see some background footage that we shot earlier this week when they uh, were just setting up the machine and learning to use it. When we come back, we're gonna to talk to Jordan and Lisa about all this and more, and we will be right back. Welcome back here today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. As I mentioned, our guests today are Jordan and Lisa, both students in the drafting program, just a couple doors down from Studio B, in which we find ourselves this morning. Jordan, you've been on the show before, so you're an old pro. Lisa, I've known you for years here on campus, saw you come through the, uh, uh, some of the dual enroll programs, and now uh, a student in your own right here. Your mother works here in the administration building, so thanks for joining us today. It's nice to be here. Uh, as I mentioned, I think that we first met you when you were in robotics camp. Yes, sir. Uh, the robotics camp along with the uh, rocket camp, uh, the STEM program offering that every summer. Jordan, you've had the opportunity to be part of that uh, this last season, I think helping out as one of the instructors. Let's start at the beginning. Lisa, obviously your mom's here, so you know all about Florida Panhandle Technical College. Jordan, your family's here, has been here forever. You obviously know about the school. But Lisa, what actually got you excited about the opportunities here at the college and, and what make you, made you enter specifically the drafting program? My mom sent me on an errand to take a note to Miss Taylor one day and I saw them 3D printing something and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And ever since then I've been hooked on it. Wow, and I didn't know that story. That is pretty cool. Obviously, you'd already spent a lot of time on the campus, so you had a chance to see the different prog the, the different programs, the different instructors. You probably knew most of them, uh, and they certainly knew who you were. So you actually literally had your choice of, of anything going on campus. You went in there, you saw the 3D printers. That Those are pretty cool uh, oh, yeah. and state-of-the-art. When did you actually start the program? Officially, it was two years ago, Okay. but I shadowed two summers before then. And so how long do you have left uh, before you're done with that drafting program? I'm thinking it's the end of this fall that I'll be done. Okay. Have you thought what you do from here? What, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, I, people ask me <laughs> that all the time, and I'm three times your age. But it's true. What, what do you see yourself doing when you get out of here? That is a very good question. Uh, I've been interested in a couple of places in Panama that are doing things with AutoCAD and all but I'm also working at DOT right now, and maybe one day I'll be able to get into their surveying team there. Wow, so more the civil engineering uh, CAD part. Jordan, um, we've had the opportunity to speak in the past. Uh, I know yeah. most of your family go to Kiwanis with, uh, uh, with one of your brothers. Yeah. Know your dad, um, know your grandfather, obviously longtime uh, business owner here in uh, Washington County. We spoke initially, but for those viewers who didn't see that show, when did you actually start the drafting program? Uh, I think it was last August. I've been here going on, this will be my second year, so I'm coming into my second, my third semester. So you're slated to finish approximately when? Uh, coming up about, it's supposed to be done by Christmas. Oh wow, so you really have to make some decisions pretty quick. What, what are your thoughts on job market? Well I've already started putting in applications with businesses in Panama City at uh, I put in at Merrick, at Eastern Shipbuilding, at, there's a couple of other ones. I think I put in at Booz Allen Hamilton. There might have been one more. 
I'm not sure. You know, last year we took a trip down to Eastern Shipbuilding and um, actually met up with several of your students who were there on that day. We watched the ship get launched. As a matter of fact, we're showing some footage of that right now. We t had took that opportunity to interview some of the past graduates of the drafting program who are now in pretty well-paid jobs there at Eastern Shipbuilding, one of whom is actually one of the draft, uh, drafting uh, supervisors. So she's really done well. So we know what you guys produce over there in that drafting program. Ms. Taylor um, gets rave reviews from students, from other instructors, from the staff here. Lisa, give us your thoughts on uh, Tanya Taylor as, as that drafting instructor. She's a great teacher. If you have a question, she, if she doesn't know it, she'll look it up and give you the best possible answer that she could find. And she's always there to help you, even if it's not with classwork. If it's something hindering your classwork, she's going to help you with that, too, if she can. And I'm glad that you say that. So often we see that here on campus. This becomes a family. Uh, you know, even if you're in drafting, you may be friends with the welding instructor or somebody that's in that class, or you know the culinary program, or you know the cosmetology or pharmacy tech. And at the end of the day, people do care about what you're doing. The interesting part here, Ms. Taylor's a good example. Eddie Beckworth, another good example. Both of them could be making really big dollars in their private industries. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanya comes from a family who has a drafting business. She still does some of that on the side. She could be making a lot more money doing that than she does making uh, teaching and, and turning out students here. But Eddie Beckworth in, in welding, and I just pick him because he comes to mind immediately. He could be out there making huge money, and yet for many years now he's been turning out welders who are then going on to fill those jobs and making those big dollars. Like I said, we went to uh, Eastern Shipbuilding, and that was just one application. You mentioned civil engineering, basically, or civil CAD work, if you go to a DOT with a surveying situation. CAD, computer-aided computer -aided drafting and drawing, uh, what do you feel that that program does for you specifically, Lisa, when it comes to that DOT position? I would imagine that there are people there, maybe some verging on retirement. It's a, probably a pretty big uh, department probably some people that have not been exposed to some of that which you have even at your younger age. Talk a little bit about that head, that leg up it gives you, that advantage it gives you coming into that kind of a job, having knowledge, education, and certification in that state-of-the-art technology. It is a definite, like you said, a leg up. Um, they, I might be able to answer questions that about the program that they don't know. But also, since they have a slightly different program, they could help me, but I won't be less knowledgeable because I already have an idea of what I need to do. I would imagine CAD is CAD, um, and, and you can pretty much intuitively go from one platform to another. In the case of DOT, they don't use AutoCAD, they use uh, something they else? They use, I can't remember Micro what it is. I think it is, Micro Yeah, Station. and there's several of them like that that some of the bigger governmental organizations mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. Jordan, um, going forward, you mentioned a couple of places that you've already put out applications to. What do you see yourself doing in any of those specific businesses? What, what kind of products, what kind of drawings do you see yourself doing in, under those uh, conditions? Well, no, most of the, uh, the companies that I put in at are mostly military companies. So doing parts for, if you look at their websites, they have military vehicles mostly on their, on their front of their website, like planes, land vehicles, water vehicles, all kinds of stuff putting out parts, it's like individual parts for those or helping build bigger parts. Some of those requiring security clearances? Yes. Wow. You know, uh, Sherry Skipper, who, who, uh, who teaches the cybersecurity program here, she, she teaches people hacking from a point of view that if you go to a business and you become part of that anti-hacking crew that you at least understand that. But one of her big things is that you're squeaky clean. And I've heard her give these uh, talks to incoming students get rid of all that crap you did as a kid on Facebook. You know, that's, that's not going to hold you in good stead when you go to work, when mm -hmm. you go to work for somebody who needs a security clearance, whether it's government, yeah. whether it's private business. Uh, watch out what you say on social media. And nowadays, potential employers look at that stuff. They Google you, Lisa, they when do. you go for that job, and they can see where you were uh, maybe doing something you shouldn't have been doing on Facebook. Nothing illegal necessarily, but they're going to take that and they're going to say, this is the kind of person that Lisa or Jordan is, and should we, do we want that kind of person working here? Mm -hmm. What's been the toughest part about drafting, Jordan, since you've been in that program? What's, what's given you the biggest challenge? 
staying on task. It's just, uh, it's just, that's just more of a personal thing though. Nothing really, no really major hindrances, I guess, in the class itself. Just more keeping your mind on task. I mean, that's, that's skills that you have to learn for future purposes. Time management? Yeah. Because you only have, you have 150 hours each section you have of the course. And if you don't finish your, that allotted amount of work in that 150 hours, then you gotta pay to have more hours put in so you can finish the work. And I'm glad that you mentioned the pay. Obviously we have available here uh, Perkins funding, we have uh, Pell Grants, we have other opportunities. The uh, uh, Florida Panhandle Technical College Foundation actually makes sure that any student who wants to come here gets a chance to come here and they will figure out some way to help financially even if you can't qualify for some of those other grants or funding sources. Lisa, are you taking advantage of any of that financial aid? I got a foundation scholarship when I graduated, and it has definitely been a big help for me and my mom for me to come here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you say it was through the foundation? Yes, sir. Now, did you have to apply for that? I did. And it was very simple. It was just one page I had to fill out, and it was a great amount to cover for my, scholar, my tuition here. And Jordan, what about you? Same question. Same thing. I got, foundation? Yeah, the foundation scholarship. I got it earlier this uh, this year. And they finished paying for my tuition for the rest of the time I'm going to be here. The foundation, uh, I've gotten to know a little bit over the last five or six years that we've been working with the, with the school. The opportunity, again, for people sometimes who fall through those cracks, if you make just a little bit too much to be able to uh, qualify for Pell Grant, if you make um, just a little bit too much to qualify for some of those other uh, scholarship opportunities, they help at the very least with books and tuition. It's interesting that many people who have lived here pretty much their whole lives, at least up to this point, are unaware that Florida Panhandle Technical College exists that they drive by it every day on Highway 90 or on South Boulevard. They don't know if it's a school or a prison or a hospital. You know, they just see this big building. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose, Lisa, that, that, that some people just are unaware of what we do right here on campus? Well, most of it is because their parents or their peers have never pointed out that they had all these other options. But I, I believe that's what it is. And once they find out these options, like, oh wow their minds blown there's just so many different programs for them to try out not enough community outreach if the people knew what we had there'd probably be more students here mm -hmm. and i'm glad that you say the awareness part it's only been a little over a year that washington homes technical center became florida panhandle technical college do you feel that high school students have a reluctance to go to a Votech or to a technical center or to a trade school versus going to a college and that when the name change happened here that all of a sudden perhaps it became a little bit more uh, acceptable or that there was a little more attraction to go to college to, be, to go to take drafting versus going to FSU or some other four-year college which is going to cost you a whole lot more money to do that same thing. Lisa, do you, do you, what do you think about that? Well. I think that as soon as it did turn into a tech college, people were like, this is a place I can go to and not feel bad about it not being a type of college. Because I know some people would try to go to community college, even though they can't probably afford it, just because it is a college. Uh, Jordan, are, is there peer pressure? Uh, you're, a stu you're a senior in high school, you know, um, you, you, you're part of whatever clubs and organizations, intramural sports, and everybody's talking about what they're going to do when they get out of school, and this guy's going to this four-year college, and this guy's going to this four-year college, and this guy's going to go take welding. Do you think that there's a stigma there, and that again, having the, this a college now with a college accreditations, do you think that makes a difference? I think it'd make it not sound so I guess like the, because I'd say the technical college is more of like an underdog. People don't think much of it, but when you get here, there's a lot more to meet the eye. So now that they're calling it the Florida Panhandle Technical College, it has more appeal. And we'll, we'll only spend another minute on that, but it, we've found that with some of the other local four-year colleges visit here, they start off with just that attitude. Oh, you guys aren't really a college. I mean, you were a technical center. You're the Votech, and they just changed your name. 
that could be farther from the truth. And once they take the tour and they see the classes, they see the accreditations, they see the degree and certification programming available right here on the campus, they come away with a totally different attitude. Interestingly, a couple of years ago, they had all of the teachers in all of the schools in Washington County take the tour, many of whom had never set foot on the campus, many of whom, and this is, this is really unforgivable, didn't even know what we did here. But now, in their respective middle school or high school, they can actually direct, whether they're a guidance counselor or just a teacher, they can guide some of their, uh, their students, maybe who they know has some financial some challenges, that they know they're not going to be able to afford $120,000 to go to FSU, but they can certainly qualify for a Pell Grant or they can get some kind of funding. Come here for a year or two. What's interesting, we have people come here as dual enrollment. and we'll talk about dual enrollment, which is another whole cool thing too, in a second. But they'll come here, and they'll get enough of, a, of an education to get a certification, and then they'll go off to a four-year college being able to get a job as an electrician's helper or a culinary worker or a, a working out in, the, in, a, in a pharmacy, making a whole lot more, more money than they could slinging burgers. Nothing wrong with working in a McDonald's, certainly, but if you can make $20 or dollars an hour working part-time, working your way through college because of the certification you got here by coming here for a year or so first, yeah. our motto here is um, a career in a year. One life, one year, one great career, a well-paid job in the real world. Lisa, did you actually attend as a dual enrolled student in high school? I did. I did. I started my junior year, and I went three hours a day, some days. And it's taken time, but I've definitely made some headway in class with it. Cool thing about dual enrollment, cost your parents nothing, cost your mom nothing. Um, <laughs> You went in the afternoon, right? You go to high school in the morning and then come here in the afternoon? Is that the way it worked? I came here in the morning and went to high school in the afternoon. Okay. Either way, it's a half day, so some schools mm -hmm. do it one way. And Now, did you have your option, or did the school tell you when you would do it? I had my option because I drove. Okay. Well, and, and that's, that's something I'm learning. I, I, I thought all the dual enrolled came in the afternoon, so every show we do, I learn a little something, too. <laughs> Jordan, did you do the same thing? Did you do any dual enrollment when you were in high school? I didn't. After I graduated, I came here the summer, at, right after the summer. The summer after I graduated, I came here. And I remember that. You had yeah. just, you didn't get much of a vacation. No, I got a couple months after high school and then I started here. Yeah, not a bad thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I want, we're showing footage right now of, of the drafting program and, and you guys working. You guys have a lot of fun. You know, really, you do. And I, I have to say that for pretty much all of the classes. If you're in a class that all you do is put your nose into a book, that's one thing. But you guys get to do some cool stuff. First of all, you're working on a computer most of the time. You're learning <laughs> drafting. You're learning all that, uh, that uh, Ms. Taylor has to offer. The other day, you had the brand new 3D printer delivered. Uh, we're showing some footage of that right now. We had the opportunity to watch you unbox it, set it up, literally assemble it in the classroom. Lisa, have you had a chance to do hands-on on that 3D printer at all yet? I have not yet because I'm still there part-time and when we get the time to start messing with it, it's time for me to go to work. Gotcha. Jordan, I know that you were there for some of that though, weren't you? Yeah, I was there. I started using it just yesterday. We started printing some stuff out and testing it out and see what we could figure out about it. Uh, according to what you know about the job market, about these places for whom you may go to work, mm -hmm. are they using these 3D printers? And, and what, pl what part does that technology play when you get into the job force and, and have a job? Well, I know these places, they're using 3D printers and they're starting small and they're realizing how handy they are and they're getting bigger with it and using them more and more and spending more money on these printers. And when they start spending more money and having all this new equipment, they're going to need new people to operate it. So. It's good to have these printers here in our classroom, learning how to use them, preparing us for going out in the world and these jobs we're preparing ourselves for. Now these 3D printers, I imagine, would be used to what? To, to build prototypes of, of new technology? Is that your understanding? What, what, do you, yes, what do you understand that 3D printers would be used for, Lisa? It can do prototypes. It can be an actual working, well, I don't know what a prototype is that, but it can be the real deal, not just the prototype. And you can do pretty much everything you designed it to. It comes with all kinds of materials, so you can build stuff out of rubber and copper and a, a substance that's kind of like wood. And um, Talk a little bit about that 3D printer, Jordan, and, 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 and 
going into it, did you have any idea that this was going to be what it was? And, and what was the difference between your, your conceptions of what, because I know you guys were talking about it for a long time. Hey, it's going to be here soon. It's going to be here soon. I got a text from Ms. Taylor on Sunday said, hey, I just got a notice that uh, uh, UPS is going to have it here in the morning. Now that you've had a chance to have hands on, what's the difference between what your thoughts were to begin with? And, and now that you really know what it's all about, what, what have you learned? It's impressive just to see the capabilities that it has. I mean, it's it's something you really have to just see it happening. You're seeing it print. It's just it's mind blowing. Uh, we you guys did the little logo for Stacker uh, the other day, so we we've got a little bit of footage of that being done now. Again, you start small. You do little little things. You guys actually had a 3D printer already in the classroom that you'd had for 10 or 11 years. It was sort of old-fashioned, uh, if you can say that, about 10 years ago. I mean, you know, it was an oldie. It was very small. The platen was small. It could only print so high. This thing, how tall can you print? Almost two foot? Uh, yeah, this one's a little over two foot. And our other one, we had a five by five by five space we could print in. Quite a difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. Particularly if you're looking at a prototype, Lisa, of something that, that's just simply bigger. Um, going forward, where do you see the value of being able to learn how to use this 3D printer? As I said, uh, in the, when we were talking before we started taping, there's a lot of, I can't help but think you're not necessarily going to go to a business that you have to use a 3D printer, but you're going to be drawing for something that will then be printed on a 3D printer. So you have to know how it works to be able to do the right kind of drawings. What, do you th what are your thoughts about the value of learning this going forward? When something is printed, you can see better how it's fitting together than just in the computer. And you'll get an idea of how you need to make adjustments on the computer so it's easier when it's been printed to work with. And, and that makes sense. You're looking at things many times in 3D on the computer screen. 3D on the computer screen is still 2D because you can't reach in there. And, and that makes a lot of sense. I hadn't thought of that. You're watching it being formed before. So actually watching it printing on a 3D printer is probably as valuable as getting that piece brought to you after it's done because you're seeing how these things interact. We had kind of kidded around. I know you can do carbon fiber. Uh, and, I, and I was kidding around with you guys the other day about being able to print out some uh, rotors for one of our drones uh, with carbon fiber, but I think that you could actually probably do that. Oh yeah, we could do that definitely. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll do it. One of the things that people don't realize is the cost of these things. You guys had a grant. I think Miss Taylor told me that she had enough to buy three machines. She ended up buying two. Hopefully, reserving some money because the consumables, the, the the materials that go into what you're actually printing with, which is which is those layers, rubber, uh, plastic, uh, we said carbon fiber, uh, copper, uh, steel, some other materials, mm -hmm. those come in a spool, and there's an expense there. And mm -hmm. obviously, learning you're going to be the more you use, the more you're going to learn. The more you want to learn, the more you're going to have to use. That expense is going to keep rising. If you as a business would like to get involved, I would imagine that uh, you would take contributions from a, a business out there. You know, what's interesting is that Florida Panhandle Technical College has, no, has joined Northwest Florida Manufacturers Council. Going to them with businesses like Rex Lumber, for instance, right here to the north of us mm -hmm. in Graceville, West Point Home right here in town, saying, what is it that you need in your employees? When you hire uh, a maintenance man, what does he have to, he needs to know how to weld, he knows how to do this. You go to Booz Allen and, and say, what kind of a drafts person do you need? Easier for us to teach the skills to students such as yourself so that you've got a guaranteed job than instead of teaching what you, we think you should learn and then try to find a business that you're a match for. Makes total sense. You already know there's a void there. There's somebody who needs somebody with those skills. Mm -hmm. Are you finding, Lisa, that that's exactly what, what you're hearing from Ms. Taylor, that you're hearing her say, you need to know how to do this because that particular business needs, to, needs somebody who can do that? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> she pounds it into our heads that you need to know this because they want this. And there are several businesses that won't hire you unless you have a certain certification. And she pushes us to get that certification. Drafting, uh, CAD certainly, um, uh, not drafting because we use the old pencils and, and pens and the old uh, drafting boards um, and the rulers and, and all of the mechanical stuff. CAD or computer aided drafting being relatively new but still having been around for 20, 30 years, um, definitely come a long way in that period of time. It's interesting that we look at the old days 10 years ago as in some of that old antiquated 
your technology moves very, very quickly. Oh, yeah. Every year, every six months, and if you get a little bit behind that curve, it may be the difference in getting a job. Have you seen that yeah. that might be the case? Oh yeah, because these new businesses there, a lot of them have state-of-the-art technology in there, and if you don't know how to run it, then you won't have a job. You're of no use to them if that's the case. Yeah. What's, the best been, what's been the best part of being in the program, Lisa? Definitely the knowledge it's given me. My math improved a lot <laughs> because of this class. And just my knowledge in general of how the mechanisms work together. Jordan pointed out that time management or, or you know, staying on task was one of the challenges. What about you? What, what challenge did you find? <laughs> Mine is not getting frustrated when I don't get it right the first time. Are you a perfectionist? Oh yes, <laughs> very much so. And when I do just a little bit off, it, it'll take me an hour to figure out where, where I went wrong at. <laughs> I appreciate you both coming over here today and taking the time away from class. Jordan, is there anything that you'd add? Um, is there anything that you would say to somebody out there who's maybe kind of lost, doesn't know what they want to do, um, to maybe engage them and, and explain to them why they should perhaps look at drafting as a potential career? Uh, I definitely wouldn't throw the idea away. I mean, if, if it's something you think you'd enjoy, I'd come take a look at it before just saying uh, it's not worth it. Again, as we started off by, by saying, you can come here for one program and actually end up on the entire other end of the campus. By the time you get done, they have that fluidity, that, that flexibility here of saying, okay, no problem. Just because you started carpentry doesn't mean we, we want you to stay with it. If you're going to hate it, we want you to do what you want. And many times people end up in places totally different. Lisa, is there anything that you would add uh, in addition to everything that we've talked about today? I would suggest that people, if they don't know what they want to do, to shadow some classes. It could just change their life. And I'm glad you say that. So if somebody wants to come in here, maybe go to student services, get checked in, introduce themselves, they would have that opportunity to maybe spend a little bit of time in several classes if they said, okay, my three interests are culinary, cosmetology, and welding. Obviously, three totally different fields, they would actually give you the opportunity to go and uh, sit in those classes for a while and, and maybe observe. Yes, sir. Man, you can't beat that. <laughs> Anything that you would add uh, before we go, Jordan? I mean, I wouldn't overlook the technical college. I mean, there's just so much that's offered here. Over 40 degree and certification programs offered right now, some of our newest ones being hemodialysis, which obviously um, that's a growth industry in the medical field. Uh, we've got the new drone program, uh, and that's huge. They, the FAA has still not even finalized the rules and regulations, so the applications for those in agriculture and surveying, uh, Gulf Power is using them now to uh, fly the power lines looking for damage and breaks, where before they had to get a helicopter to do that. Difference in cost is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunities for, for uh, dangerous uh, situations and somebody getting uh, harmed in that, in that uh, operation certainly diminished, so it's cheaper, it's safer. Uh, and then obviously uh, we've got things like cybersecurity, which tie in with what you guys do, because if you don't have a good cybersecurity person working at your business and you spend all day on a computer, your stuff could get hacked. So I would venture to say that even though we still teach some of the old skills like culinary and cosmetology and welding, that on the other side of the scale, we've got all the new high tech stuff. You guys recently took advantage of some of the um, programming uh, and machinery at um, the welding program uh, in the, what was it, the CNC machine? You were actually what made Christmas ornaments? Tell me a little bit about that, Lisa. Every year, our teacher gives us a theme, and we have to design it on AutoCAD in 2D. And it can be a little frustrating sometimes because it has to be a certain distance in some places. But it's a good experience to try to be creative for that. So you did that, you took the drawings, and then you went to Eddie Beckworth over at Welding, and, and what did you do over there? Uh, he just plugged them into his machine, and he just he showed us how his machine cut it out. And he used a plasma uh, cutter, yeah. which in itself is state-of-the-art. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if you think that um, the technical skills are old-fashioned, well, you're living in the wrong world because you can choose to go to a four-year college, and that's great, and we applaud you if you do that, and come out four years later with $120,000, $130,000 in debt and no saleable skill. And for, for us, in the direction we're coming from, that's exactly our only focus is the fact that you, you, don't, you can't necessarily come out of a four-year college and get a job because at that point you don't necessarily have skills. A year here, you've got a career, and you're ready to go to work. Um, a little bit longer if you want to take your time. <laughs> Lisa, Jordan, thanks so much for taking the time today. I know that sometimes it's a little outside of somebody's comfort zone to come and do the show. I think it's important, though, that people 
learn more about the technical college, certainly in this case, drafting, uh, brand new um, uh, 3D printer. Uh, I would imagine if somebody wanted to come take a look at it and, and see what it was all about, they could just come to the uh, student center here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like to know more about Florida Panhandle Technical College, you can go to our website, fptc.edu. We've got a Facebook page, which is Florida Panhandle Technical College on Facebook. You can certainly see a lot of what we've talked about here today. If you're interested, come to the student center right here on Hoyt Street in downtown Chipley. Introduce yourself. As Lisa says, they'll bring you around. They'll introduce you to instructors, give you an idea in the real world of what to expect. We'd love to see you. Uh, stay tuned. We've got more to come. Uh, all that the uh, Florida Panhandle Technical College offers here, uh, a career in a year. Uh, what we like to say, one life, one year, one great career. We'll be right back.